Council is to foresee a partnership uh, with the UK uh, to Galileo inside the rules that, uh, 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 that we approved uh, a few years ago and that we're going to apply. So there, is no, there can be no misunderstanding on, 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 on that issue. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it's I think a good uh, a proposal, a good uh, example of how far you can go and what is what is possible and what is not possible. Okay, thank you. Okay, Joanna Chair. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Hofstadt. Um, <clears throat> just picking up on Stephen's questions there, as I understand what Mr. Barnier said yesterday, the reason the UK cannot leave the European Union and remain part of the arrest warrant is because we're leaving the jurisdiction of the court. We won't have the Charter of Fundamental Rights and we won't have free movement. And these are all fundamental things that underpin the arrest warrant. That's correct, isn't it? Yeah. So if we wanted to be in the European arrest warrant, we'd have to make ourselves subject to the Court of Justice and, and the Charter of Fundamental in, Rights. Indeed, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, you said there um, earlier that um, staying, in the Europe, staying in the single market and the customs union would be an option for the United Kingdom, depending on what our red lines are. Indeed. Yeah. And I think you've, um, you're familiar with this document, Scotland's Place in Europe, that was produced by the Scottish Government in yeah. January 2016. And I think you're familiar, Mr Verhofstadt, that Scotland voted 62% to remain. And what the Scottish Government have done in recognition of the fact that England and Wales voted to leave, Scotland and Northern Ireland voted to remain, is to propose a compromise whereby the whole of the United Kingdom would stay in the single market and some form of a customs union. You're aware of that proposal that was put forward by the yeah, Scottish yeah, government. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, what I think th there is no opposition from the European side if <laughs> the <laughs> proposal comes to, I mean, that uh, solve, to Brussels. That would solve the Northern Irish border problem as well, wouldn't it? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, on the day after the Brexit vote, which is almost two years ago, uh, you tweeted, it, it's wrong that Scotland might be taken out of the, e <coughs> out of the European <coughs> Union when it voted to stay happy to discuss with Nicola Sturgeon. Now, we all know that you've met the First Minister of Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon, since then. Can you just elaborate on what your feelings are and the views of, this, of the European Parliament and the fact that Scotland voted to remain, but the citizens of Scotland are being taken out of Europe against their will? The European Union. Yeah, so uh, I have uh, tweeted about it, and so I, I stay behind my tweet. It's already uh, an enormous achievement. Uh, <laughs> uh, and. and uh, mm. That's, it's obvious. You, you, everybody sees the contradiction between people who have voted against and then are nevertheless, uh, because of the institutional structure of your country, uh, are uh, obliged to follow a decision taken by a majority. But that's uh, the way the, uh, Great Britain is organized. We will not, and that I have said from day one, interfere uh, in the institutional debate in Britain. That is not all responsibility. That's your responsibility, hmm. and that's uh, the consequence of your uh, institutional setup uh, of, 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 of Britain. But yeah, we have to recognize that uh, for a number of people it has consequences. Eh? They, they are bound by a decision that they have not taken, and that uh, their region or their nation, I don't know what word is most accurate, uh, hmm. has been taken. You also said in the aftermath of the British European Union referendum, if Scotland decides to leave the UK and to be an independent state, and they decide to be part of the European Union, I think there's no big obstacle to doing that. I said that? Yes. And where is that? I don't remember me a tweet about that. It was reported, and it wasn't in a tweet, it was reported in September 2016 in the major Scottish newspaper, The Daily Record. I am in any way, I repeat what I said, I will never, as a negotiator and a coordinator for the European Parliament, intervene in the institutional setup of any of the countries involved in this, and certainly not in the UK. I can understand a lot of these uh, um, uh, opinions uh, that are expressed in, in, in Scotland, but it's not us who have to uh, deal with it, or to use or to abuse them. On the floor of the European Parliament, has any concern been expressed about the fact that uh, people in Scotland are being taken out of the European Union against their will? Has concern been expressed on the floor of the Parliament by parliamentarians? Yeah, yeah. that's true. Uh, there is a, a huge concern about that. That is expressed in the plenary uh, at every uh, debate we have on Brexit and in every debate we have on the resolutions we have adopted. 
but uh, I have to tell you the resolutions uh, that uh, uh, the Parliament has adopted have always been also supported by the people you are referring to. So just to summarise, you, the Parliament favour an association agreement. Exactly. But if the United Kingdom could bring itself to follow the compromise suggested by the Scottish Government of staying in the European Economic Area and a customs union, you would see that as a solution for the whole of the UK and also for the Northern Irish border problem. In any way, there will be no objection by the European side uh, if uh, the UK government is going in such a direction. But integral to that would be accepting the jurisdiction of the Court of Justice and the Charter of Fundamental Rights. Yeah, indeed, that's, that's one of the, of, the, of, of the red lines for the moment of the UK government. Thank you. OK. Right, uh, Richard Graham is next. Welcome, uh, Monsieur Verhofstadt. Um, in terms of the withdrawal agreement and the political declaration that goes with it, um, all of us have agreed that there should be as much detail as possible. Um, from your point of view, are the key elements of the detail fundamentally already agreed between the European Parliament and the European Commission, and do they fundamentally reflect Michel Barnier's chart of the four pillars or, for example, have you been able to take forward the discussion that we had briefly in Brussels on our last visit about the potential value, for example, of a pillar that encompasses financial stability and therefore financial services, as well as the four pillars that Monsieur Barnier 